Hi Flosstube! Welcome back! Uh, if you're a subscriber, welcome back. So happy to have you guys back. Uh, if you're new and just stumbled onto uh, our little corner of the world here, I'm Erin, Two More Teeny Stitcher here and on Instagram. And this is a channel about cross stitch. That's what we talk about here. So if that's something that's interesting to you, I'm so happy to have you and welcome, welcome. It is Wednesday, September 11th. It's September 11th. We're going to leave it there. Uh, but it's Wednesday and it also means that September's flying by. This week has gone so fast that, and so much has happened that I feel one, like how is it Wednesday again, but also I have so much to tell you because it's been so busy. So hope everybody had a good week. We've definitely been getting into the swing of things here, back to school, back to dance, getting back into routine, sort of, almost, not quite. Mm. Water today, mm. no cocktail today, wah wah. It's uh, actually Bunko night. Tonight is Bunko, uh, neighborhood Bunko group. I'll be going to that a little bit later. There's always some wine and candy and sweets there, so we're gonna save the indulgences of calories and adult beverages for Bunko. So just water today. Uh, so let's see what's been going on this past week. Well, last Thursday, I did get to go down to Acorns and Threads for first Thursday meetup again, and my friend Carrie went with me. We took the train again. It went all smoothly, fantastic, worked out great. Uh, got to Acorns and Threads by uh, like 1130, and the place was packed. It was a huge group uh and just god bless jean she is so welcoming and just made it all work we are now at a bring your own chair situation but i might have to figure out some kind of like little popping pop-up camping chair or something maybe that i could take on the train i don't know people were standing up and stitching it was a fantastic time now i will say that it was, it was a big group. It was only my second time there. And this is why I love this group so much. Second time. You walk in the door and it's like walking into Cheers. Everybody's so happy to see you. So happy you came. Uh, it was fantastic. I still feel like I get a little over, like I'm kind of flop sweating just even thinking about like talking about going down there. It's such a fantastic time, but there are so many people that I feel like I'm still not doing a very good job of like mingling and getting a chance to chat with everybody. So I absolutely did not have a chance to talk to everybody that was down there. And so if I didn't get a chance to chat with you, hopefully next time. And so I, therefore I'm also going to forget all the people that were there. However, Audrey, Stitchy Witch 42, is brilliant and did a video of everybody who is there and had them all introduce themselves and what they're stitching on. And that's on her Floss Tube channel. <laughs> so after this, or you can pause, you can pause this, go check that out, come back, or after you watch this, you go check out her video and see everybody that was there. It was fantastic. I will probably mention a few people um, as I kind of go through things. Uh, just because I actually sat and chatted with them um, a little bit more just based on where I was on the table or wandering around the store. But uh, I loved it. It's, it's fantastic. I hope I get to go again next month. I wish I was going to Fall Fling, still on the wait list. I don't, I don't know how much that moves. It's a local thing. So I imagine anybody who's going is like really going to um, Acorns and Threads Fall Fling. But next year, I will be there for sure next year. So anyhow, but that does bring me to local stitchy meetups. So although I love going to Acorns and Threads, I know that there are a lot of like Seattle area stitchers. And I've been talking about working on a meetup. And we have one on the books. Yay! So um, the gal that I met last week that I talked about last week, Robin, that we met up at Threads uh, Thread Needle Street, 
at Threadneedle Street. Um, she works for the library and helped me out getting some space at the library. So we have a local Seattle, East Side, I don't know, if you come from wherever, I don't think, you know, don't don't drive four hours like you do to go to Acorns, but if you're in the area and want to come stitch with us, we would love to have you. So that is going to be, uh, they were already all booked up for September. So we have an October date and a November date on the calendar, all reserved at the Renton Highlands Library. The first one's gonna be Sunday, October 13th. Is that right? I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. Yes, the 13th from one to five. So bring, you know, just something to drink. You can bring a little snack if you want. Nothing that's like gonna, you know, drive people in the library crazy with odors, but bring, you know, bring some pretzels or whatever and you're stitching and we will all meet up and get to know each other. I'm so excited for a local meetup. I did post that as an event in the Pacific Northwest uh, Stitchers group. So, but you don't need to RSVP. The room holds like 50 people. There'll be plenty of space, but we would love to have, we'd love to have a big group. That'd be really fun. So that's on the calendar for October. So let's see. So I did that on Thursday. So that was a really long day, but really fun. And then over the weekend, uh, it was a busy, busy weekend because Saturday was blast off day for the dance team. So it's just a really big, it's parents, it's dancers, it's the whole team all together blasting off the season. The studio director always brings in an amazing motivational speaker and the kids do their team contracts and do a little skit and they learn who their buddies are and it's always a really really fun time she had a fantastic speaker this year talking about building trust as a team about how a team is not a group of people who work together but a group of people who trust each other it was fantastic she does she talked to all of us as a group then had a little talk with just the parents while the kids were off doing their thing. Then she talked to the kids about, you know, stuff that pertained to them more on their level. It was a great day, but that is a long, uh, long, busy day. So we did that on Saturday. And then Sunday, my oldest and I went and did all the shopping to get her ready to move into her dorm. So that's all I'm looking I'm sitting in my dining room looking in my living room at the piles. It's like the staging area. It is the move into the college dorm staging area. And I'm trying not to tear up. No, it's fine. <laughs> She's not going very far and we're really excited for her. So that was really fun. And she did pick out her comforter and all that. It only came with one sham and it you couldn't buy like an extra one. So I'm gonna get some coordinating fabric, but now that she's picked that out, I'm gonna get some coordinating fabric to do the pillow finish on that texture mom cross stitch I did for her. And hopefully I'll do that. Oh, I, I need to do that before our floss tube finishing weekend, don't I? Hmm, is that right? Yeah, I need to do that this weekend. Because <laughs> she moves in next Friday. <gasps> oh, these things are sneaking up on me. However, not this weekend, but next weekend, Michelle Bendy, uh, Michelle Garrett, Michelle Bendy Stitchy, she and hmm, somebody else, I don't know, has declared the weekend of the 20th floss tube finishing weekend. <laughs> so get out all those projects that need to be finished. I oddly have a stack of stuff that needs to be finished, even though I'm kind of back and new and some of them I have a couple things that were little projects I finished at the very end of last year that I had started right after I finished the last Christmas stocking and I never did anything with so I'm gonna do those and then that following week's floss tube you'll get to see some kind of like blast from the past like previous finishes which is I think I have two of them and they both need to be finished so I'll be fun. Maybe I can get some more things finished in the meantime. So I have more things to FFO. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. I keep starting stuff, guys. So with that, let's roll right into what I worked on the past week. 
which feels like a bunch of really random stuff. I was, I did do all of my homework for Magical Stitches, um, a Facebook group, Magical Stitches and Literature. Is that right? School of Magical Stitches? School of Magical Stitches and Literature. I did do my homework for that. Can't even remember what last week's was. This week, you had to choose whether you were going to go to the dark side or the light side, which gave a very Star Wars kind of feel, which I love too, so hey. Um, I, of course, chose light side, but you stitch on both. There's a bonus. So I have been doing that, but I feel like I've also been doing other just random projects that I wanted to work on. And then I went and joined another challenge group enchanting stitches enchant i'll link everything below you guys know i can't i can't remember names of stuff to save my life but i do spend a decent amount of time making sure everything's linked in the description box below so i'll link that facebook group as well both of them school magical stitches and literature which is based on harry potter and their fun cross stitching challenges and then the new one which is i think enchanted stitching enchanted stitchers something enchanted and it's Disney challenges. So it, like each month is a different Disney movie. Mm -hmm. As soon as I heard about that, you can bet. I think I first heard it mentioned on um, Sarah King's Floss Tube, My Stitching Kingdom, who is fantastic and you should watch. Uh, and I ran right over there. I'm like, well, I gotta find where this group is. There's a Disney stitching group. <laughs> mm. See, we love Disney. I love Disney cruising. Woo -hoo -hoo. Love Disney cruising, love the parks, love the movies, all of it. So, okay, so what did I work on this week? First things first, I'll show you guys where I am on the Harry Potter book covers. Oh, this is all very precarious. I have this all stacked on one of my dining room chairs and it is like a tower of cross stitch projects that is about to fall over. Um, so this project lives in my uh, Garan Toten bags bag and someone had commented last week because I had asked you to tell me what your favorite like cross stitch accessory notion was and someone mentioned their Harry Potter Garan Toten bag and I said we might be bag twins are we bag twins I hope we're bag twins let me know I love this bag because it holds all the stuff for this huge project so, Mr. Reiner, this is what it's going to look like because I don't think I held this up last week. So this is, I should really like reprint this, maybe laminated or something. I have a laminator. I could do that. Uh, it's by Fox and Teacups Designs and it is the uh, super size max color version because, you know, I'm going to do something. Go big. <laughs> and this is where I've gotten to this week. So I stitched on it 100 stitches every day except Thursday, and I really fully intended to do like 200 one day to make it up, and I don't think that I did. But I did get all the way up. So this is, I finally hit the top side of the page. So, and I got through like the rest of this kind of crazy um, confetti heavy area there. Let's see, you guys can see that? So it's coming along nicely, and this block here is now where I'm going to be back to. This is where I'm going to be working in tonight when I get home from Bunko. And um, it's, I think the edge of the broom is in this block. So I think the edge right here, where you see Harry's broom, I think it looks like that starts in this block. So moving right along, which means I'm like down to here in this column. And that's starting to feel like good progress, right? I, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Like I could actually do it. Like it would actually be finished one day. Because you start to look at these projects, projects and do the math and you're like, well, it's going to take me like two and a half, three years. But I, I feel like I really like doing 100 stitches a day in that. Like if I'm really on a roll, I'll do two blocks, but I love doing a hundred stitches a day in that. Uh, and it just, cause then I get some good progress and it feels like I'll actually finish. So that's good. What else did I work on? So then on Thursday, I went to Acorns and Threads and I was trying to pick things that 
for like easy to do on the train. So, you know, no like high count, you know, hard to see fabric. So I decided that I was going to work on, oh, so this was a start and a finish. I decided that I was gonna work on my October Lizzie Kate yearbook. And I think I used it for a homework. I used it for a homework. I used it for a extra credit. And I finished it. So it was a start and a finish. I didn't finish it on Thursday. I finished it on Sunday. So I went ahead and just, I, I was so close after the two, Hold on, why does my phone, the phone never rings, guys, I swear, until I start recording a floss tube. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Annoying ringing and then beeping of the answering machine picking up over. <laughs> every time, every time, it's miraculous that the phone rings every time. It's probably because, what time is it? It's 5.40, right? So uh, this is usually my... The time that I record, because it's happy hour, <laughs> and nobody's in the house until um, my husband comes home from work. So it's a nice quiet time, but it's apparently also when all the robo calls come in. So October yearbook. So here it is. There we go, October yearbook. And I made a couple changes. Um, if you guys remember, I put these in that little teal, uh, stand like pedestal frame and this is one of two months that didn't have any of that teal in the pattern so I decided to change out this pumpkin here was supposed to be green but I decided to make it a teal pumpkin because that's actually a thing right the teal pumpkins for allergies I don't have a kid with severe allergies but you know I think that's cool you know be inclusive so I, teal pumpkins are a thing, so I changed the green one to teal, and then I also changed out, I think this border was supposed to also be that same green. So I just wanted it more than one spot. So there we go. So October's all done. I still need to sew the little charm on, but I'll do that after I iron it, which I didn't get around to. So start and a finish October yearbook. And it's not even the middle of September. That's amazing, which I like having those little small things because I feel like I'm getting things done because a lot of my other starts are big. Like I can't seem to start other small projects other than the little yearbook. So I did that. And then the only other thing I worked on, and I don't know why I decided to take this. I really couldn't even tell you. I got to find it. But I decided that I was going to start, I started, did I tell you guys I started a million things this week? Not a million, four. I started four projects this week. I just couldn't stop starting things. I couldn't stop starting things. Hmm, that makes good sense. But I don't know why I decided that I needed to start this now, other than I really want it finished. Like I want the finished product, like project, and it's, I'm doing it on 14 count Ada. So it's really, I knew it would be really easy to stitch. So that project is the Love My Stitching collaboration with So Much To Love and Hands On Design. And I had showed you guys this during my whip parade and it got the most comments. Like so many people commented on this because I've already picked out all the fabric that I want to use so that I could pick out threads. And this got so many comments and people were like, I can't wait to see that done. And I thought, me too. And I should work on it because then I'll actually get it done and can make the project bag and have it. So I didn't get much of a start in on this. Uh, I started it on the way back. But so all I got was one little word, motif. That's all I got. And this I'm doing on 14 count Ada. And I just, it's just three colors. It's so nice and easy. See, Bitsy Bob, mm, love the Bitsy Bob. Uh, I'm just using three colors, 3848, 906, and 413. That's all it calls for, are the three colors to kind of go with the fabric. So there's the three colors. And I, I think I wanna just, if, 
this was really fast, just like the little motif. Like I think I did this the last 40 minutes on the train. Otherwise I was working on that October yearbook. And I, if I just did like one little, you know, word or two every week, this would go pretty quick. Uh, it's really cute. So I'm gonna, I, I can't get it to, it didn't work this week for any challenges, any challenge homework or anything like that, but I'm gonna get back to that because I think that that would be fun to just, sorry guys, hair, that's annoying for me and you. And then the only other thing I worked on that day was at Acorns and Threads. I had showed this last week and I had, I worked a little tiny, 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 like so tiny, wait till you see it because it's really tiny. Um, I worked a little bit on uh, Autumn Drum by the Blue Flower because I had talked about how these, the um, initials, well, I mean, it says A and T for acorns and threads on here, but the initials here looked to me on the chart, like it didn't say that it was one over one, but I thought that that's how the chart read. Like looking at it, I thought, I think I need to do that one over one. They're not, they could be half stitches, but I think it should be one over one. And I had said last week, I'm going to find, you know, I'm going to go to the experts down there who have been stitching much longer than me. And figure it out. Well, I did. And I, we got so lucky. Lisa Smith of Kindred Stitcher, the Kindred Stitcher was there, uh, on Thursday and she was down at the end of the table where we managed to squeeze ourselves in. My friend Carrie was sitting next to her and she was working on the most gorgeous. Oh, first of all, everybody down there is working on amazing projects. That's part of what's so fun is to go see what everybody's working on but she was working on the most beautiful sampler and her stitching is just perfect. And I, it was, I'm sure it was 40 count and they were so tiny and so perfect. And it was really fun to just watch her stitch. I could have just sat and watched her stitch. So my friend Carrie was sitting next to her. And then at one point Carrie got up to go do some shopping and I like a good friend rudely took her spot, moved my stuff over, dumped it on top and said to Lisa, I'm going to sit here and you're going to hold my hand <laughs> and show me how to do one over one. I'd actually asked her earlier. I had her look at it and I said, I think this is how this should be. And she said, yes, definitely. One over one is how you would do that. And it's going to look great. And I was said, I've never done that before. And she was super sweet and encouraging was like, you can do it. No problem. It's just X's. And so then I sat myself next to her and essentially propositioned her. She probably thinks I'm a crazy person, which I am. <laughs> let's, let's be real. I'm super awkward, uh, especially in person. So I sat next to her. I said, I'm going to sit next to you and you can hold my hand while I attempt this one over one stitching because I just needed some moral support. I've never done any one over one before ever. And this is on 36 uh, count linen. It's supposed to be on 40. Kit came with 40. I switched out for 36 because 40 still scares me. And it really would have scared me to do one over one. So I sit down, I get my silk on the thread and I'm looking at it and I'm all prepped to do. Like <laughs> I figured out, she helped me figure out where I should start it, you know, because A&M is I just realized I didn't put my initials on this. I put my husband's initials on this for the love. Maybe I'll put my initials on the other side instead of the year. <laughs> Maybe I'll pull it out. Why did I put an A? Because that's what was on there. Because it said A and T and I just put A and M because those are my husband's initials. Brilliant, Aaron. Brilliant. And I just noticed that. This is how with it I am. Are you guys all getting a good laugh? I really hope so, because that's hysterical. That's hysterical. Uh, anyway, she helped me figure out how to squish together what are not my initials <laughs> into that spot. And I got my silk all on the needle and I looked down and thought, I don't, I don't know how to start that thread. Like I normally, and I just, 
for this project, taught myself to pin stitch. Uh, I was inspired by Deborah Stitch the Stash pin stitching, like her pin stitching her starts. And so I learned to do it. She said it was very easy. She was right. She showed me how, and then I watched the videos. Now I'm sitting there looking at this going, I looked at Lisa, I go, how do I start this? Like I would normally pin stitch. How do I start this? Bless her heart. She's like, oh, you can pin stitch one over one. And she took my thing and so graciously showed me how to pin stitch one over one. Those women down there are geniuses. Geniuses. So she showed me how to start, got me started. And I have now done my first one over one that I may have to tear out. What do you guys think? Should I tear this out? There's two little squirrels on it. I'm going to say they're me and my husband. And instead of putting the date on the other side, I'm going to put my initials on the other side. What do we think about that? I'm thinking, because I can't tear out my very first, the very first one over one stitching I did. I can't tear that out. Do you guys want to see it? I've been holding it here long enough. There it is. There it is. Not my initials, my husband's initials, Andrew, and he goes by Drew, but there it is, one over one. Isn't it adorable? It's so cute. I did it <laughs> with a lot of help. <laughs> I'm dying, I'm dying, you guys, that I can't even manage to put my own initials on something. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got home and I spent some more time working on Game of Swans and I am still completely in love with this project. First of all, it's in my other Garan Toten Bags bag. So it's the week of Garan Toten Bags and it's Downton Abbey. And the movie comes out in two weeks. How excited are we? And I thought this is the perfect bag for it because, you know, it's Game of Swans. And on the pattern, it talks about how swans were only owned by royal people and their beaks were marked. It's very interesting. You should read the back of the pattern. But see, royal, earls, dukes, lovely. You get the connection, right? So here's what it looks like. Sort of, there's been much conversation in my comments section about the color and perhaps it's a mistake on the pattern because my stems are yellow because I'm using the Gentle Arts. And I, I've looked, guys. So I'm, first of all, let me show you. Let me show you where I am and you can see it and then we can have a chat about the colors. So I did, I use this for, I don't know. I use this for stuff and I don't know how many stitches it is, but this is where I got to on it. So there we go. So I extended the border, this outside border down and um, I did more of the yellow stems and added in some of the like stems and leaves for the other flowers. So that's where I got. And I love this so much. And I need to put it away for a little bit to work on other things, but oh, I I probably could just sit and like this might this could turn me into a monogamous stitcher. Monogamous stitcher. This could do it, maybe. Hmm. Probably not. But okay, so the yellow. The fact that it's yellow and not like the beige gray. I did look, because quite a few people said, I think that's a mistake. You better check because you don't want to run out of thread. Uh, yes, very good points. I did look on uh, like the Long Dog Facebook page and some other groups to see other finished pieces. And I would say that it's half and half, that half of them have the yellow and half of them have the beige. And what I'm wondering is if, which it would be weird to me, I'm wondering if this picture is the DMC. It Like if this was, if, this was stitched with DMC and not the Gentle Arts. Because it seems like the people who are using the uh, Gentle Arts threads, it's yellow. And the people who aren't, who are using DMC, it's this beige. 
So that's what I think is going on. I love it. I love the more kind of brighter, colorful version that it's turning into with these general art threads. And so I'm running with it. <laughs> I love it. Love it, love it. So that's Game of Swans. And then uh, over the weekend. So over the weekend, I worked on that. And then the next part of the, the Stiach Along dropped on Saturday. And this is in what is actually the majority of my bags, which are the, you know, ones off of Amazon. And I actually do love those. I mean, for cheap bags, they're great. So the next part, what is this up to? What are we up to? Four? Part four, I think. And look, ba-bam, done with one exception. I, I don't have one of the floss colors. I don't know how that happened. Like I went out and kitted this project up. I must have missed one. I must have missed one on the list somehow because I'm going along and I'm short one of the flosses, like 644 or something, I think. I don't know. It doesn't even really matter. It matters not at all what color I'm missing. I'm missing one of them. So this is everything but that one color. However, there's only like five stitches. There's five, like maybe six in that color, so. I need to go get that. I'll do that probably by this weekend and then I'll get it. But I, I'm still counting it. I'm counting it as done, current, there we go, stiach, boom. And if you're interested in what the stiach along is, I'll link it below. It is a truly, truly mystery stitch along. I have no idea what that's gonna be. And I have to say like, I, I'm having fun in the group, Everybody is really funny. There's fun challenges that they do. I don't actually participate in a lot of them, but it's fun to see what everybody's doing. I don't know that I'm enjoying stitching on something that I don't know what it's going to be. And not because I, you know, because there's lots of guesses out there that's Golden Girls. <laughs> I love the Golden Girls. I'm not a super fan, but I watched them a lot in college in, on reruns. I don't know why. It was on. See, you didn't have TiVo then. So you just watch whatever was on late at night. Golden Girls was on a lot. So it's not that I am worried that I won't like what it is. I'm just not necessarily enjoying randomly stitching without being like, oh, look at this cute house that I'm making or look at this pretty flower that I'm stitching. I'm not sure that I'm enjoying that part of it. I don't know. I'm going to do it. I mean, because I want to... <laughs> because I started it gosh darn it I'm gonna I'm gonna do it but I don't know that I'll do it again we'll see um okay what else did I work on that weekend so I also worked a little bit more but I didn't finish it I was hoping it would be finished this week hopefully next week I did work a little bit more on the autumn ABCs um oh random thread oh. so I just filled in some more of the pumpkin so I just have I'm really close like I've got this little bit of the pumpkin and the last line of letters to do and then that'll be done so oh it's showing really bright that's sweet potato it's not that bright it's really gray here today uh, the rain's been back <laughs> it's fall here it's fall here in the Pacific Northwest so I had to get out the big light it's kind of washing everything out and brightening it up. So there's that. I'm hoping that'll be a finish uh, this week. And then I can throw that on the pile of things to FFO. And then this week I worked on, because it is the September of Stitch Alongs, where I'm going to work on all the Stitch Alongs. I was able to get this to work for um, several different assignments. I actually brought back out and worked on, oh, I've got threads going everywhere. Here, let me flip those over. Look, it's Hello Pumpkin. <laughs> this I am not caught up on. Uh, part one's done, and I did a bunch of work on part two. So last time this owl didn't have a head or a wing. He was like this. He had no head or wing. So I finished out the owl. And I did a little bit of this. I did half of that leaf and half of that leaf. And that was 600 stitches. So this, the, this is the thing. I, these parts, it's not 
hard stitching and the parts come out and they're super cute and I think, oh, that'll stitch up fast. It's a lot. Each part is a lot of stitching. So I think that that's why I haven't kept up with it because I'm only ever doing like a few hundred stitches and that owl's head and wing and half of two leaves was 600 stitches. Whew. But he's so cute. Look how cute he is, guys. Look how cute he is. And I love this piece and I would like it to be finished because I think it's cute and I would hang it up. So, but it got more work. Yay. So I count that. That got worked on this month. If it doesn't come out again, it doesn't come out again. I at least worked on it. And then I also did some more work on Midnight Watch by Blackbird Designs. I have definitely decided I am not doing this alphabet. I'm going to do one line with my initials and the date up under here. And then that's going to be it. Not doing all those. And I may or may not do the orange blobbies. I'm kind of liking it without as I'm stitching up the border. So, and I got, um, I did get a different floss at, while I was at Acorns and Threads for this um, because the cat here, it looks black and on the border it looks black, but it's actually in person it's brown. And I wanted my cat to be black. So I went and got, uh, I picked out cast iron skillet for my black cat. So, and you'll see it because I actually started on him a little bit. So here's where I am on Midnight Watch. I brought down some more of the border. I brought down some more leaves. I did a little work on the moon, put in the little bat and started on the cat. So I kind of did a little bit here, a little bit there. And there's a mistake in here, somewhere over here. I was all excited because I brought the border down and then like all of these leaves were done, all of these leaves were done and this one was done, but this one was not. And I thought, okay, I'll count off here and I'll come down here and then come down. And so, you know, I was kind of sweating it a little bit. Like, was this gonna end up in the right spot? It did. But somehow, and I can't find where, I'm like one thread over too far. Like, I don't know. It's just one thread. So I squished it in and kind of fudged it along over here. But it's fine. <laughs> you guys can't tell, can you? Nobody's ever going to know. So there's a little more work on Midnight Watch. And this is on, I'm smelling it because I love the smell of this fabric. It's 32 count Winter's Brew by R&R. &R, and it smells like tea or coffee or something brewing. I love it. So that is Midnight Watch. What else did I work on? Always referencing. Uh, this is why I write stuff down, guys. I would have no, I would have no recollection that this is what I worked on two days ago if I didn't write it down. Um... Okay, so my starts were October yearbook, the project bag. This is a start and haul. We'll pull it out here. I ordered the French Kitchen from the Inspired Needle, and it came in last week. This week? Last week? I don't know, and I couldn't wait to start it. Could not wait. So... Um, there's the pattern. It's going to be four and, uh, I signed up for the club. I think it's a club exclusive to Inspired Needle. You can probably still get in on it. I don't know. I don't really understand how those things work. Someone had mentioned it and maybe Kathy Haberman might have put something up on her Instagram and I, I signed up because I love a kit. I still do. I still love a kit. And this came with everything. You could get, you could order it with or without the little clipboard to finish it. And so I, of course, got it. And they even gave you the mat board to lace your project to. 
So it came with that. And then there's going to be four, of, I think four of them, and you can switch them out for the season. So, and it's a collaboration between um, Hands On Design and Summer House Stitch Works. So yes, yes, love them both. Love a kit. Love anything that's seasonal, switch it out. Sold, <laughs> sold. So that came, there's what it looks like, the first one. And it came with the called for fabric that is a 32 count chocolate milk fabrics by Stephanie, hand dye fabrics by Stephanie. I love this fabric, you guys. I'm really liking it. And it came with all of the called for flosses that are all Weeks Dye Works. So it's all Weeks Dye Works. And I got a little bit of a start on it. There's three little apples and the start of the little border around them. So there it is on chocolate milk. And look, a floss tube or two you know binder. I'll tell you where that came from uh, when we get to mail call. <laughs> but I went, I so went in spirit, <laughs> but I liked the like wooden kitcheny look of it. I thought it kind of went with the project. Well, sure, sure it did. So that was start number three. And then my last start and my last whip for the week is Penny Autumn. I love, I love everything about this. A little Quaker on the house and the big huge flower pots and the penny rug. Love it. So I'm doing this on, um, I had ordered all of the flosses from Threads Entwined. Uh, Trish did a fantastic, she's so generous guys, so generous. And she did a fantastic Labor Day sale. And so I ended up ordering a bunch of floss to kit some stuff up. And so I got the floss from her and I pulled out, this is actually some 36 count, this is the same 36 count flax linen as acorn drum because this was kind of the off cuttings of that. Uh, the only thing is, is that this calls for the black here in the border is black coffee, which, you know, if you guys have tried to order that lately, you know, nobody has it. It's back ordered. Nobody has black coffee. Uh, the DMC was 310, but I wasn't sure I wanted to just, that I wanted to do 310. Uh, so I went through and pulled out some other over dyed black ish type threads I have and I had also gotten I also kitted up all the flosses for which will be a start for Turkey Bay and so I ended up going with I had Raven I had Blackbird I had the cast iron skillet and I ended up going with Blackbird which is a little more brownish than black it looks really brown there it's it is dense towards more black, but I thought it looked really nice with all the other colors. So that's what I'm using instead of black coffee for this. And this is how far I got. Just doing a little working my way around the penny rug border. So there we go. So there's my start on Penny Autumn with Blackbird instead of black coffee, which I've heard a couple people say is their favorite over dyed black. And that might be why nobody can get it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have it all. There's plenty of blacks out in the world. Black colors, black flosses, over dyed, not over dyed. We've already had the anchor versus DMC discussion here. So that's it. That's all my works in progress uh, and finishes and starts. Oh my gosh, starts and finishes. Maybe I will restrain myself and only start one thing next week. <laughs> Goals, goals, only starting one thing next week. So let's see, what else do we need to talk about? Floss tube shout outs. I did watch a lot, I did get some floss tube watching in. I feel like I'm behind though. I'm, I feel like I'm a little bit behind. It could be because I just keep adding new people, but I love seeing what everybody is up to. Uh, this weekend I did watch, there were two people that I watched that I thought, oh, I want to mention them for sure. One is um, Madam Ice, I believe her name's Kate. I think it'd be Kate. Madam Ice, 
She lives in Charleston, which is really, I connected with that immediately because that's where my husband and I were married. We were married in Charleston. It's a fantastic town. Love it. But she also does some, has a great, um, I don't, she just seems so happy. I, I like the projects she's working on. She's really upbeat and positive. And so, and I was happy to see another video from her. Uh, so go check out Madam Ice. And then the other person that had another video come out, and I actually think it was maybe the middle of last week and it just, I was a little behind. And so I was excited to get to her video on my um, watch later list is Rolodex Stitches, Carla. Her name's Carla. Uh, Rolodex stitches and of course I'll list them below so that you can find them on YouTube and go watch them she is a hoot I mean I can tell that we were maybe like separated at birth a little bit uh, she makes me laugh out loud uh, she's living in Japan at the moment with her family and so I she talks a little bit about what they're doing she has young kids they're living in Japan which I already said She's fantastic. Rolodex Stitches. Yes, not Stitcher. Rolodex Stitches. It'll be below anyway. Go check them out. So that's really fun. And then I did have a little bit of random threads lying around. I did have some mail. So we'll first do like Stitchy Kindness mail. Because the first thing that was waiting for me when I got back from acorns and threads last Thursday. I got home last night and the girls had brought in a package, the most amazing package from my friend Carla, Carla being crafty. And seriously, she sent me, I, I died. Wait till you guys see this. She started sewing and she says that she's a beginner sewer or an amateur sewer seamstress. Mm. I don't know. At the sewing machine, with with the sewing machine and the sewing together of the fabric, she claims that she is a novice. But look at this bag that she sent me. And it has a little tag on it. It's you I like. And this is a really cute little like perforated paper tag that I think in her last video she said she got at Joanne's. So that's really cute. Look at this adorable zipper. It's like laser cut, so cute. And then inside, oh, and look at the inside fabric olives like how amazing is this bag margaritas uh i don't know what is that bahama mama alabama slammer i don't know lot fun right up my alley olives on the inside and then she included a little pattern for me black cat society because we both have black cats and i participated in her black cat birthday sale and then inside were two little notions pouches that she made. Look at this with snaps, people. I mean, I don't know how to really sew. I got you to do straight lines. That's about it. Um, you guys probably, those of you who sew, but look at that for someone who's a novice. And this one, she had put a little seam ripper in, which unfortunately I've had, it's not in there because I have to use it. I actually ripped out like full on ripped out not backed up a few stitches used a seam ripper for the first time ripped out one of those candy corns it came out way funky i don't know what happened and then also she included this little notions pouch for which for flosses and she included two needle necessities flosses for me which i think is that threadworks now are they now michelle bendy are they threadworks now i think so i could be Go totally making that up but look how pretty look at the pretty autumnal colors and these are a heck of, I mean it's 20 yards of floss in that that is beautiful like 20 yards you could totally do a small monochromatic you know not a big huge ink circles but you could do a like a normal size one with 20 yards that's gorgeous I might have to find a pattern to do with that, but not start next week. One start, <laughs> one plan start next week. That's it. Fingers crossed. So this is what Carla sent me and that just blew me away. So nice. So, and she's a doll too. So go check out her floss tube as well. The other thing that was waiting for me is I won a giveaway from Top Knot Stitcher. 
I about died my jaw on the floor when she said my name could not believe it so she sent this project bag and it was kind of like a it was filled with things from like the retreats that she had gone to this summer, which I just love because I lived vicariously through all of you that went to retreats and now I feel like I went with you too. So that's where the <laughs> New Jersey floss tube retreat needle minder came from. It came from Abby. So look at this cute little owl. And this was filled with all kinds of goodies, all kinds of goodies. If you want to see what was packed in here, she shows it on, I think a couple videos ago, go check her out. But there were a couple things in here that she didn't, or maybe she did mention, and I didn't notice that I wanted to show. One, she sent this beeswax, uh, and I don't have any. So I was very excited, but someone talked to me about using beeswax. I know people use it as a thread conditioner, but maybe you're not supposed to use it with metallics because it'll dull the shine. All of you who use beeswax, talk to me about using your beeswax because now I have some. That's very exciting. She also sent some threads. Don't know what that is. Um, she also sent some threads for me. Where is the other one? Don't know where it went. There were three. <laughs> it's probably sitting somewhere. So she sent the third one is also a Victorian motto, and it's like the same blue that is in this color and cotton. So the three of them go beautifully together. She has a fantastic eye. And two of them, the peach, the solid peach and the solid like dusky blue are um, summer sorbet, are Victorian motto. And I was so excited about that because I've never used Victorian motto, and I know a lot of you guys love them. So there's... I don't know. Do I have a piece of paper? I don't know where the blue one went. I thought I stuck it in here. I don't know what's. I'm a little floopy today, guys. So there they are. So pretty. And then there was a blue one. And then when she uh, drew me for as the winner, she said, oh, I have your, because I order from her all the time. You guys know I love her needle minder. She said, uh, go pick out a few things for my shop and I'll throw in and I have your shipping address uh, because I order from her. And I said, great, I will like, thank you, thank you so much. I also was wanting to place an order with you. So I'm gonna go place an order <laughs> and then you can just throw it all together. Um, so many needle minders, they're all sticking together. So I wanted to show you the things that I got from her shop because some of these she put in as prizes and some I ordered and I love. So first off, look at these cat scissors. So you can go check these out in her shop, Top Notch Stitcher on Etsy, I'll link her below. Look at the cat scissors. I had to get a rainbow pair and I also got a non-rainbow pair for a giveaway. Um, and then I don't know which of these ones I ordered. I also ordered a grab bag. She put some in as my prize. So I'm just going to show you all the needle miners I got from her because they're amazing. This one I loved. This one I know that I asked for as part of the, um, winning her giveaway. And it's a Hogwarts library. Oh, honestly, don't you two read. And then Espresso Patronum. I know I bought that one and I think she's out like I think that these are sold out but she's getting more so if you like the espresso patronum and then bird blackbird donuts because donuts moon I know what's going on that what that project's going on and then I ordered a grab bag and these are the ones that came in her grab bag guys so her grab bags are a killer deal look at that tiger Tobin Appreciation Club, coffee mugs, this like really pretty stained glass one. Go check out her shop. She has fantastic needle minders, all kinds of fun things. And some of those things are going to be in a giveaway that we're going to talk about in just a little bit.
Okay. So I think that was it for, oh, there it is. There's the other Victorian motto. So pretty. Don't know what I'm going to use them on. That would be another fantastic just like color combo for an ink circles, mandala type pattern. Hit me with, up with your favorite mandala patterns that like are monochromatic that I could just use two or three uh, threads on because I now have thread schooler that I want to use. Uh, I had also ordered a couple more So Much to Love project, so much to love, so much to love project bags because I can't stop. I got a Christmas and look at these bats. Oh, so good. So yay, more project bags. And I, I really am going to stop buying project bags. Maybe we'll see. And then I did buy a couple things at Acorns when I was there, but I think that I did really good. I think I did really, really good restraining myself, but I got some good stuff that I do want to show you guys. So the first thing that I got was one of Michelle Garrett's Bendy Stitchies, one of her new designs. Look at that. Oh, I have her love one. This one's Noel. I mean, come on, red cup. I'm gonna need all, I'm gonna, every single thing, like crazy plant thing she designs, I'm gonna need. So I got that. Was not smart enough to get her to sign it for me. Um, I also got a little bit of Lady Dot Create Chenille uh, for finishing, floss tube finishing weekend. I think that that's gonna go um, on plum pudding. I, it looks like the green on one of the little mice's dress. And then, because I apparently have to buy a pattern and kit it up every time I'm there, this is what caught my eye this time. Don't know why, other than I've started a lot of fall and Halloween, and there are still so many more fall and Halloween patterns that I would love to get and stitch. I need to stop. I need to stop buying and starting fall and Halloween until I finish some of these. So apparently I've moved on to Christmas. <laughs> and this caught my eye. It's not new. You guys have all seen it before. You'll be like, Erin, that's so two years ago. Because I know that I've seen somebody finish this, but I got... Cottage Garden, Cottage Garden Samplings, Peace on Earth. Because, well, I mean, you guys are all like, yeah, Erin, where you been? I'm just back at stitching. I'm still fascinated by all the stuff that's already out. But look at the wing on that, guys. Look at that bird. Oh! So while I was there, I went and found linen for it. I don't know what I called for. Called for Dove by Weeks Sideworks, Works. But I got... Um, 36 count fog lifter by R and R. Oh, that looks there. It's blue. It's a really light, pretty blue. Does that show? There. That's about it. It's a grayish, it's a light grayish blue. And I think it's gonna be so pretty. And then of course I got could have used that black too. I knew I had another one. I had espresso bean. And onyx. Oh well. I knew I had more blacks, over dyed blacks, for when I was looking for Penny Autumn, but these had not made it into my spreadsheet yet because I just bought them. But here are, we'll go this way. Here's all the flosses. So I got all the called for threads. So this is all ready to go. I'm thinking, I don't know, October I thought was going to be Thanksgiving starts, but I might start Christmas stitching in October. That looks so bright in this light and it's not, that's holly berry. I mean, it's, but oh, that's going to be so pretty. And I don't, this is not small. Like it, theirs always look small. I mean, not small. But it looks solidly medium. I guess it is, 125 by 125. But look at that brick house. Look at the brick house. The gorgeous bird. Mm, mm, that one caught my eye. And I'll have extra of this fabric. It's bigger than I need. So I think I like the petty point, uh, but didn't have it there. And I think it'll be really pretty maybe even on this. 
and I might just stitch some little like a tall little dotty things around. What do we think? Would that be okay, Michelle? Should I go with something more blue? I don't know. Let's think about it. We'll think about it, shall we? Maybe I do still have plenty of like white Ada. So maybe I'll just hand dye myself some Ada, Michelle. Maybe we'll do that too. I don't know, options. There are always plenty of options, but I'm clearly ready to start thinking about uh, Christmas and winter starts. So I got those. And then the only other thing I got was I wanted to get some floss for antique locks and keys, which I had showed I had gotten by Shakespeare's Peddler. I showed you guys that pattern a couple weeks ago. Uh, the Lost and Floss Gals are doing a sal of it, which I didn't join, even though it's September. Oh, maybe I should start it because it's the September of sal. No, it's to work on the ones I started, Erin. I had already bought the pattern because I loved it and I had been wanting to do it. So I thought, well, I'll find a good floss because you can do it in whatever color, right? And I found two that I loved, these two. And I couldn't decide. That's my list of people for the giveaway. I couldn't decide. So this is espresso bean, which is like a kind of a worn looking black, right? But this is verdigris. And at Acorns, they had one. A lot of them were like very much this kind of tealish, but this was more, this particular skein had way more of like the coppery color. Like it looks like old aged metal. And so I was asking Stephanie um, of Stitch Goes My Heart, I said, "What? I can't decide. I can't decide which one. What do you think? And she said, brilliant. See, this is where being around other stitchers, ah, she said, you don't have to choose. You could do it in two cut. You could use both of them. Genius. Genius. You could use both of them. But I... I thought, okay, you, she's right. They don't all have to be the same color. Like, it's just a bunch of keys and locks. You do them all in different colors. But I thought, maybe three, because I like the balance of three in design. And so then I had to find a third that maybe looked like old worn brass, and I chose um, almost auburn. So those are going to be the three colors that I'm going to use for Shakespeare's Peddler Antique Locks and Keys. I haven't figured out what fabric yet, but I you know I've picked up plenty of fabric lately. So I don't know when I'll start that, but I that's the kind of thing that going to a local needle work store, that to me is the best thing about it, is you can actually just look at all the flosses and I would pick some up and put them back. And then you get to be around other stitchers who are much more wise than you that say things like you could do more than one color. Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> so, okay, other than giveaway, that's all I've got, which is good because as usual, I have rambled at you guys for an hour. So the only thing left is to do the giveaway for this week, um, which was for the Mandala Hummingbird from uh, Awesome Pattern Studio. And um, I had asked you guys to tell me what your favorite uh, things were that you like to stitch with if you wanted to be entered. And you guys, I, I know a lot of other floss tubers say they have the best commenters. I'd pit y'all against any of them. Fan, I, so many great ideas, like, or not ideas, but I knew that I would find other things that I needed to try that are all of your favorite things. So lots of people love, you know, their needle minders, obviously, needle minders, uh, with the huge haul of needle minders I had this week. I don't know how I stitch without them. When I first got back into stitching, I would see needle minders. I thought, why is that necessary to life? This is what I would do. I stitch on the end of my couch. I would stick them in the arm of the couch. That's not smart, but I was like, well, this works. I know exactly where my needle is. It's right there in the arm of the couch until I left them there and, you know, brushed up against them or lost them. Uh, so when I first saw needle miners, I'm like, I don't get it. And then I bought one 
and I get it, and you all get it. So got a lot of the usual suspects, Q snaps, needle minders, a uh, lot, you guys all have uh, fantastic things that are your favorites. Things that were new to me that I now need to check out, super snips. Quite a few people mentioned super snips, and I now am going to need some. Of course, I did a little Googling. You can buy a 36 count tub from Walmart. I could have one for each whip. <laughs> not saying I'm not going to do it. It's not a bad idea because I've been looking for uh, cheap little scissors. I had found a pair at Daiso that I loved. I bought them because it's buck fifty. Everything at Daiso is a dollar fifty. There's a few things that aren't, but they're marked. Generally, everything's dollar fifty. And I had found a really great little pair of scissors. And I thought, well, I'll buy this pair and see how they work, see if they cut thread okay. And they're great, and I love them. And when I went back to get a bunch more, they're not there. So this might be my answer, super snips. Uh, ball tip needles was another one some of you talked about. And I saw some at Acorns, and I almost bought them. But they're not cheap. So several of you love them. You're going to have to make a case. You're going to have to make a case for the ball tip needles. Uh, because even with needle minders, I, I keep one on every project. Um, I lose them. I like to buy them in several packs at a time. And those would be precious needles. I thought, unless these are going to do my laundry, I don't know. My favorite answer though, was someone said their, their favorite was their mom's floss dash. That got me guys that got me. Uh, because their mom had passed away and they thought of her every time they got into her stash. That That's the winner for favorite. <laughs> Not that you win anything. Maybe. Ooh, maybe. Um, so, but I did have 40 people that told me what their favorite things are and wanted to be entered for the giveaway. So we're going to use the random number generator. Got to put in 1 to 40. It always defaults to 10 when you open it. So 1 to 40. You guys see that? And number 36. So 36 is Karen Davis Macon. Karen, you win. You win the Mandala Hummingbird. So um, I'm gonna circle you here, put a little star by your name. So uh, shoot me your mailing address and I'll get that in the mail to you. This week's giveaway. There isn't one, mm, uh, but here's why. Hit a thousand subscribers, you guys. When I mentioned it last week, I thought, oh, that'll take a few weeks and I have some time to like figure out what I wanna do. Uh, no, blew past it this week and so I'm working on the big giveaway for a thousand subscriber. It's gonna be my favorite things. I know for sure right now there will be a Bitsy Bob. There will be needle minders. There will be pattern, some flaws. I'm pulling together all of my favorite things that I like right now. I'm not saying they're my favorite things forever, but for right now, my favorite things for stitching. But some of it's coming. <laughs> and then, so next week, I'm hoping by next week, I'll have that all pulled together and I'll show you guys what everything is and then we'll leave it open until the end of September so lots of people have a chance to enter. So that's coming next week. And thank you guys. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me and commenting. I love chatting with you all on here and on Instagram and email. And this is just a fantastic community. And I love it. So I'm really excited to do another big giveaway. And hopefully I'll have that all pulled together for you guys for next week. But in the meantime, have a great week stitching. It's gonna be another busy, busy weekend here. My middle daughter has convinced me to drive to Oregon, back down to Portland <laughs> on Friday to try to adopt a dog. So I'm doing another round trip to Portland, but this time driving, she said she'd help drive. She promised she would help drive. So that's going down on Friday, and then it's another busy weekend of dance. The kids are performing at our big fair on Sunday, so 
if you're going to the fair, let me know. <laughs> we had the fair on Sunday. You can come see uh, at least one. I think just one of the kids. I think just one of the kids' this team is performing. Don't know. I should probably. I should probably figure that out. So. In the meantime, have a great week, and uh, I will see you guys back here next Wednesday. Cheers.